our finger track just in case we need it again later on. Now I'm going to click the first finger track, hold down shift and select our particles and go control shift C or layer precompose and make sure move all attributes into the new composition is selected and check open new composition and let's call this light swirl underscore precomp and hit OK. If I turn this back so you can see that's the transparency. So now really all we've got is our streak just going around that's where I am we can see it's obscured. Okay so let's make this glow. Make a new black solid layer new solid and it's essential that this one's black Click make comp size, OK, and drag it to the bottom of the stack. Next, we'll go layer, new, adjustment layer. And let's find our fast blur effect. And take it to about 5 and click repeat edge pixels. And we'll set our mode to add. Now we'll click off. Click on again and hit Control D, Control D, Control D to duplicate them three times. Now I'll click on our first duplicate, set the blurriness to 20, the next one set it to 40, the next one set it to 200. Now this might not be the look you're going for, it looks a little bit blown out to me. So you can play around with the transfer modes. Some work better with add, some work better with screen. It's just kind of a softer effect. I like that one a bit better, and so I'll be using that. So if we go back to our first composition, we need to set our transfer mode of our uh, light swirl we just created to either screen or add. For this one I'm going to keep it at add because as you can see the light in the scene is sort of interactive with this uh, composition. Except I'll hit T and bring down the opacity a bit just so it's not so bright. See that looks much nicer. I'm going to add a color balance on top, check the preserve luminosity and we'll make this one red. Nice and red here. Except something essential that lots of people generally forget is we need to make uh, this swirl blend in with the colors in the whole scene. So I'm going to go tint, which will set up black and white, and I'll just lower the amount to tint. And I'm looking for a happy medium of red that blends into the scene properly. And I'm liking the look of that. It's looking pretty cool. So something else that I did to our actual streak was add a little bit of noise to it. So if we go back into our pre-comp, click on particles, I'll just minimize that, and type in turbulent displace and drag it in the scene. Now I'll just turn off our glow layers to make things simple, and I'll make the size go down a little bit, liking that maybe turn the amount down to about 30. So you can see there's a bit of rippling and it just makes for a little bit of distortion and it helps sell it. So let's turn our glows back on, go back into our footage, and now let's create the light that actually sort of follows where the light swirls are moving to. To do this, we'll go layer, new light, set our color to our uh, Pale red, OK. Make sure this is set to point and OK. And OK. And now we need to position our light in exactly the same spot as here. And we'll parent it to our finger track. So now it doesn't look like it's doing much, but that's because whatever uh, the light effects has to be a 3D layer. So if we hit the toggle switches and modes button and click the checkbox for the 3D. Now you can see everything saturated pretty red. If you 
move the light back or forward in Z space, we can see the light kind of minimizes or maximizes. So you want to get kind of, uh, say around about there. So we've got a vignette look kind of happening here. And now as we scroll along, it's not going to link perfectly since our particle Z depth can't really be controlled the same way. But the result looks pretty nice as it is. I'm just going to click on the light, go Control Shift Y to bring up our options and just sort of tone back the red. It's a little bit too much. Yeah, that's much nicer. So the last thing I did to mine to kind of sell it was the little ball of light where the particles are kind of coming from and the streak starts. So we'll go back into our pre-comp and once again we'll turn up our glows just to speed things up a bit. We'll go layer, new, solid and make this one white. Hit OK. So we'll turn the visibility of this off. Click on the rectangle and hold and we'll go down to the ellipse tool. So what this is going to let us do is create a circular mask really easily. So we need to get on to the pretty much the last few pixels here of the start of the light swirl and just start clicking and dragging. And if you hold down Alt Control Shift you can see it kind of uniformly scales up and down. You want to make it pretty small, probably about that, and we'll turn the visibility back on. So if we click on our white solid, hit F, and it'll feather it out a bunch. Now, I, I'm thinking that that's probably a little bit too big. So we'll click on our white solid, hit MM, try again, there we go, and bring down our mask expansion, just so it kind of gets in there a little bit. So you can see it's pretty subtle there. So we're going to duplicate it, hit F, bring the feather down to about five, toggle the mask back down and bring the expansion in even more. Maybe minus two, let's have a feather to two. Okay, toggle them down, make some more space. We'll click our first white solid, hold control, select the second white solid, and hit motion blur here, hit F4, and select the motion blur uh, checkboxes there. So the last thing to do is we'll set our transfer modes from normal to add. Okay, so now we need to get this little spot here to follow the start of our track. So if we select both of these, parent them to our finger track, you can see that's doing that pretty nicely. Now we'll turn our glows back on and what we need to do is kind of obscure this little ball thing as well. So I'm going to select the mat, control D, control D to duplicate it twice, drag one to the very top and one in between our two white solids. Now if we click on both the white solids by clicking on one, holding control and clicking on the next, we'll set the track mat to alpha inverted. So if we go back into our main comp, I watch it kind of fly around, it's going behind. So now you see, not only does the light streak be, get obscured, but that little ball of light does as well. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, there's a lot of different customization options you can do to this. For example, you could make the background blur out. You could make it change color as it's flying around. You could add more or less distortion. Yeah, it's a really, really open-ended effect. Anyway, I hope you learned a bunch from this tutorial, not only how to make a light streak, but a couple of other things about the program. Uh, just leave a comment below and tell me what you think. Once again, my name is Ben McEwen for AETutes.com and thanks for